Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and one of the most exciting features of macOS Monterey is AirPlay to Mac. This new feature allows you to natively extend or mirror your iPad, iPhone, or Mac's display to another Mac. It's an amazing feature. But did you know that AirPlay to Mac is only available to certain 2018 or newer Macs? And what if I told you that you can unlock this feature with Open Core Legacy Patcher? In this video, I'm going to give you a complete walkthrough on how to unlock it on native supported Macs. In this example, a 2015 5K iMac and even a 10 year old unsupported 2011 15 inch MacBook Pro. I'm gonna give you a complete walkthrough next. Before we get started, if you wanna learn more about AirPlay to Mac and how to use it, I put together this full video to show you all the features and full setup guide on how to use AirPlay to Mac. And I'm gonna put a link in above this video right here and a link in the description if you wanna watch that to get started. So before we begin, let's take a closer look at that requirements list that Apple put out for AirPlay to Mac. First of all, it's available on MacBook Pro 2018 or later, a MacBook Air 2018 or later, iMac 2019 or later, iMac Pro 2017, and Mac Mini 2020 or later, and Mac Pro. If you look at this list, there's some very capable Macs from 2015 all the way to 2019 that aren't even included in the supported list for AirPlay 2. It doesn't make any sense. But if we want to get a close look, Macola, who is a co-author of Open Core Legacy Patcher, put out an excellent article explaining the entire situation, how he found through investigation that Apple basically blacklisted certain models. But the good news is, is that he worked the support into Open Core Legacy Patcher, and that's what we're going to go through right now. How to create a bootloader on a USB disk, boot off of that USB disk into macOS Monterey, and AirPlay 2 will Will automatically be enabled and we can do this all the way back from 2008 all the way to 2019 so the first thing we're going to need to do is create a USB boot disk we're going to start off with our very capable 2015 5k late 2015 iMac which should totally be supported by Apple for AirPlay 2 but as you can see in the sharing pane of system preferences this is where AirPlay receiver would be so if we go over to our already set up 2011 15 inch MacBook Pro running open core legacy patcher this is what it looks like in there AirPlay receiver and once you check mark the box to enable it you can see all the AirPlay receiver settings so the idea here is that we're going to enable AirPlay 2 with the Open Core Legacy Patcher bootloader. We have two different ways to do this. We could do it temporarily with a USB bootloader disk that we create. So you can just plug that in, hold down option, boot to that bootloader, it will load macOS Monterey and the feature will automatically become available. And then when you're done, you can restart, remove the USB and then Mac's exactly like it was before. Or number two, you can install Open Core Legacy Patch or bootloader to your internal hard drive and it will always boot with the AirPlay 2 receiver enabled and you can always use it. Okay, the first thing we're gonna need is a USB flash drive. I'm gonna plug in the one that I have here now. What I recommend is a 16 gigabyte or larger USB 3.0 or faster flash disk. And there it is on the desktop. Now what we have to do is if this is a brand new flash disk from the store, we're gonna have to delete it. If you have anything on there that you need to get off there first, like files or something, copy them to the desktop or another drive now because we have to fully erase the drive. So to do that, we're gonna open up Disk Utility. Once Disk Utility is open, we want to click on this view and make sure Show All Devices is selected. Most of the time, the default view is to only show the volumes. So you got to make sure you click on the view and click Show All Devices because we need to select the top level drive here because when we go to Erase, we need to see these three sections in here, Name, Format, and the Scheme. If you only click the volume, you'll miss the scheme. And for example, some of these USB drives from the store are formatted in Windows. Name it, whatever you want, you can call it Open Core Legacy Patcher, and then format needs to be Mac OS Extended Journaled, and the scheme needs to be GUID Partition Map. Once you got that, hit Erase. Okay, hit Done, and we're done with Disk Utility. 
The next thing we need to do is we need to download OpenCore Legacy Patcher application from the open source page. I'll go there now and I'll put a link in the description. Before we download, I wanna say something really important about updates. When you're talking about unsupported Macs and patching things, sometimes they collide. Like Apple will change something in the operating system with an update and maybe something needs to be patched with OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So what they'll do is they'll come out with a new version that maybe fixes something that doesn't work. So make sure before you start, check the description in this video below in the update section right at the top if there's anything that I need to communicate with you like oh you need to use a certain version or something like that before we begin but most of the time you're going to go to the releases section here and download the latest version so we'll click on that now we'll scroll down here and you want to download the open core patcher tui app.zip click on that once and it'll download right into your downloads folder here and when it's done it'll jump up and down we want to open up the applications folder here here, and then we're going to open up downloads and we're going to move it right to our applications folder and if you already have it in there that's okay and that's how you update it you can hit replace so now that it's on here, let's open it up and click on open. Okay, now that it's open, we can see that we are running 0.3.1 and we see that the selected model is a 17,1 2015 iMac. The first thing you're gonna notice is that OpenCore Legacy Patcher will run a check on the model that you're using and it is already detected that, hey, this is a Mac OS Monterey supported Mac and this model is not supported by running this patcher by default. If you want to run OpenCore Legacy Patcher on a native Mac, please toggle the allow OpenCore on native models and settings. So all we need to do is click on number four here and hit enter. And then we're going to click on number eight, allow open core on native models. So we'll click on number eight and then hit enter. And then it says natively allow support supported Macs to use open core. Click on yes. Click Q to quit and we can go back to the, the main menu. It can say now the model is supported. Now there's really only one change that we need to make in here because the patcher detects the settings that your Mac is on. So all we're gonna do is go into patcher settings again, number five, and then we're gonna go into the miscellaneous section, number five, and then we're gonna click on the show boot mode picker on number one, and we're gonna turn that off. And then we're gonna hit Q to quit and we're gonna hit Q to quit again. The next thing we need to do is take the settings that we just set in the patcher and put them all together in a temporary folder location. So we're gonna click on number one to build those settings and then hit enter. And now those settings are built. Now we have to take those settings that we just built and then put them onto the USB drive. So we're gonna click on number two to install OpenCore to a USB drive. And then it's going to look at the disks that are connected to the system. The, the zero is usually going to be your internal drive. So don't look at that one. Look at number two is which usually the external disk, which is obviously in this situation, the USB flash drive. So click on number two. Now we want to install that EFI partition on the USB disk. Click on number one. And we need to type in our administrator password is basically creating and mounting it you EFI and then copying the files to there and unmount. And when you see enter to continue, it's done. We'll hit enter now. We're back at the main menu, we're done. So hit Q to quit. And now we're back at the desktop. If you look over here, the USB drive, when you click on it, nothing's gonna be in there because it created a hidden EFI partition that has the bootloader on it. So if it's empty, that's totally fine. The next thing we're gonna do is reboot our Mac to the boot picker by holding down the option key. When you hold down the option key on the Mac, it's almost like a startup disk selection menu that says, do you wanna to boot to, for example, this machine has bootcamp on there. So you can boot to bootcamp or back into Mac OS Monterey. But in this situation, we're now gonna see a new option that allows us to boot up open core. So we'll do that now. We're gonna hit Apple to reboot. Okay, after holding down option, we're now at the boot picker selection screen. As you can see, you'll see Macintosh hard drive here is one hard drive icon. And then over here on the right, you'll see EFI boot. So all you need to do to kick off the bootloader is hit enter or click on the arrow. And it'll automatically start booting Mac OS Monterey with the OpenCore Legacy Patcher bootloader. Okay, we're back up in macOS Monterey using the OpenCore Legacy Patcher bootloader. So now let's go into System Preferences and check out the new AirPlay 2 receiver option. We'll click on Sharing 
and look at that AirPlay 2 receiver. It's working on this 2015 5K iMac. So let's test it out. Okay, to connect, all we need to do is go up to the menu bar here for screen mirroring, and then the drop down bar will show the 2015 iMac, and all we need to do is click on the little circle here, and it's automatically gonna try to connect. Over here on the iMac, you're gonna get a little notification here. As soon as it connects, it says, hey, you sure you wanna be able to connect from this MacBook Pro? Click on accept, and then it'll pop up the code to be able to type in if we go back into system preferences click on display it's automatically going to be mirrored first to click on here and say stop mirroring if we want to be able to extend the display so now we have a wireless 2015 iMac as our display how cool is that Okay, now that you see that that works for this 2015 iMac, let's say you want to get the Mac right back to where it was without the Open Core Legacy Patch or Bootloader. Well, all we need to do is eject and remove the USB disk. So all we need to do is click on the disk on the desktop and click on eject after right clicking on it. Give it a second and it'll disappear. Now all we need to do is click on the Apple and notice before we do, we see AirPlay receiver here. We will hit restart. Okay, we'll boot it back up, we'll log in. And look at that, as you can see, AirPlay receiver not option is totally gone and we're booted up natively without open core legacy patcher. Now in the next section, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, I like being able to use this iMac here or any Mac that you're using for AirPlay 2 as a AirPlay 2 receiver all the time without using a USB boot drive. I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Okay, before we get started installing OpenCore Legacy Patcher to our supported Mac's internal hard drive, I want to mention that if you do have Bootcamp like the example in this, and like the iMac in this example, we can install OpenCore Legacy Patcher to the internal EFI. So if you are running Bootcamp, I'm going to put a link in the description that shows you what you need to do if you have Bootcamp. But that's why I would keep using the USB disk like we did in the first example because you can just remove it and boot Bootcamp and regular Mac OS without even problem after you remove the USB stick. Before installing OpenCore Legacy Patcher to your internal hard drive, I want to make sure that you back up all your files first. I've done this more times than I can even remember counting and I haven't had any issues, but I recommend backing up your files, even installing like a macOS Big Sur or macOS Monterey software update or an upgrade because you never know what could happen. Maybe a disaster strikes, but at least you have all your files saved. So you can always rebuild and put them right back. So you can use a USB flash drive to copy your files to, or you can use time machine to back up and as long as you have your backup you can continue to the next step so since we have boot camp on this iMac I'm gonna walk you through the steps all the way up to the point where I installed all the way to the internal hard drive so let's go through those steps now so we'll open up Macintosh hard drive we'll go into applications we'll open up open core legacy patcher again and we'll have to go through those steps to enable native support again by clicking on number four and clicking on number eight and Y now we're supported. We'll click on Q to quit and you can see that that is now selected. So now all we're going to do is change that boot picker option back in the patcher settings with number five. We'll click on number five again for miscellaneous settings and we're going to show boot picker mode no for false. Now that's set to false. We can hit Q to quit and Q to quit. Now we're back at the main menu. And now we're ready to build those settings to the temporary location like we did before. We'll hit Q to quit back to the main menu and hit number one to build. Those settings are now in the temporary location and overwrote what we created before for the USB drive. Hit OK. Now we're going to install those instead of the USB stick like we did in the first example. We're going to install them to the internal drive so we don't need the USB stick anymore. So we'll click on number two. It's going to load that boot picker again. Since we don't have the USB drive plugged in this time, there's only one option. The internal drive will hit zero and number one for the EFI disk and hit enter. It'll build those settings and install them to the EFI partition and then we'll be ready to go. Now that the bootloader is installed on the internal drive, I'm gonna show you how to set the default disk. So we're gonna to have to go to Apple and we'll hit restart and we're gonna hold down option again. 
Okay, now after holding down the option key, we're at the boot picker menu. And as you can see, the icon has changed from the USB flash drive to now a picture of an internal SSD drive and it is called EFI boot. That's the bootloader that's now installed on the internal hard drive. Now we have to set that as the default boot disk. So every time we start the Mac, it'll automatically boot into Mac OS with the open core legacy patch or bootloader. So all we need to do now is hold down the control key. It's gonna turn the arrow into a circle key and that sets it as a default hard drive. Bring your mouse cursor over to that and click on it. And now it's set as the default hard drive. And every time you start your Mac, it'll boot right in to the EFI bootloader of OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Now back to the unsupported Mac, this option for AirPlay 2 is already built into the patcher for unsupported Mac. So if you're running a unsupported Mac from 2010 all the way to 2014, AirPlay receiver will automatically be enabled for you. You don't have to do anything extra. And that's the beauty of OpenCore Legacy Patcher on unsupported Macs. Now, if you wanna learn how to do this to get Mac OS Monterey running on your older 2008 to 2014 unsupported Mac. I'm going to put a link above and into the description for my Mac OS monitoring and unsupported Macs from 2008 to 2014 using OpenCore Legacy Patcher. It's a full walkthrough to how to get this done. If this video created value for you, click on that like button or share. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. If you want to see more Mac OS monitoring videos, click on the playlist in this window here. You can also visit my website at mrmacintosh.com for the latest Mac news. You can also follow me on Twitter at classic2 underscore Mr. Mac. And if you want to support me, you can join my brand new Patreon. We've got a new patron, Kato, along with Apple Ninja, Swift Goose, and Apple Cheese Boy. If you're a viewer or a subscriber, you know I truly appreciate you and I catch you in the next video. Thanks.